inside. I think that cleared a lot of the air. It, it kind of let the gas out. Everyone was like, oh, we can breathe now. And I think that might have opened Ben's eyes a little bit, but it was something that needed to be said. Roethlisberger has been active in area charities and established a foundation that supports police and fire department canine units, especially around Pittsburgh. But for years, his local reputation has been marred by conflicts arising from nights out in the town. Outside the line spoke with more than a dozen employees of area bars, clubs, and restaurants that have hosted Roethlisberger and his guests. All of the employees declined to be identified because of the potential effect on their jobs and businesses. They characterized Roethlisberger, the customer, as consistently demanding and condescending to the staffs and rude to patrons. One bar manager said it's routine to offer complimentary food and drinks to a star of Roethlisberger's caliber, but the quarterback expects his whole entourage to be comped, too. I understand that the opportunities... Now, Roethlisberger faces the profound challenge of repairing his reputation with fans and teammates. I absolutely want to be the leader this team deserves, valued in the community, and a role model to kids. I have much work to do to earn this trust, and I'm committed to improving and showing everyone my true values. He has to grow up. If he wants to be the leader on this football team that gets the respect, that gets all the acclaim, that is able to lead by example, he has to step up. It's like, okay, who was the real Ben? You know, cause Ben, I know is cool dude, and it's always kind of like laughing, joking around, and then this new Ben is somebody totally different. But all these allegations, the Ben that I knew is going, and he always gonna be this new Ben, two-time Super Bowl champion, two-time allegation. That's going to forever be with his name. No matter how much good stuff he do, it's there. Kelly Naki reporting. Ben Roethlisberger, through his agent, declined to be interviewed for this story. Now, Sunday morning, Bob Lee talked with John Harris, columnist for the Pittsburgh Tribune Review, Howard Bryant, senior writer for ESPN.com, and Ashley Fox, NFL columnist for the Philadelphia Inquirer. John, you're there at, uh, at the epicenter of this. Who is the guy you know? Who is Ben Roethlisberger to you? Uh, it's hard to get to know Ben Roethlisberger. It's the way he wants it, and it's been pretty much accepted that way by the by the media. He's he's a, he's a quiet person. He keeps to himself. He speaks with the media once a week during the season, and, and that's pretty much and after games, and that's pretty much our the our, our involvement with him. You hear a lot of things. Everybody hears things, uh, but no one anticipated anything like this. So yeah, everyone is surprised, from fans to, to the media. You just don't expect this type of uh, behavior from someone of that stature. Have you had any long heart-to-hearts with him at all in your work? Actually, I did about a season ago. I, I had a story at the beginning of the year I wrote. Uh, it was very unusual to get it. We had a one-on-one. -on -one. He talked about wanting to be more of a leader. His involvement with some of his teammates, uh, like cornerback Ike Taylor, and just how he wanted to be more of a leader. About a year ago, the year they won the Super Bowl, it was very rare for him to do it. He opened himself up in a way that you don't usually see. So it's really kind of surprising to uh, see where we are now. Ashley, this is uh, blown up into something on draft week. I'm sure the NFL did not want to have to deal with it. They have dealt with it decisively. What, to your mind, is the key matter here? Well, I mean, the key matter is, is Ben Roethlisberger's continued pattern of making poor choices. I mean, he's acting in a way that's reckless. He represents, you know, one of the most storied franchises in all of professional sports, and he's embarrassing them, and he's embarrassing the league, and I think that's why you saw Roger Goodell come out and make, you know, the statements that he did and suspend him for six games. It's significant. Now, Howard, I know you, you have written that you see, obviously, a larger issue as well on the table here, one that involves athletes with their privilege and their money through the years. Well, there's no question. And I think one of the things that we find out when things like this happen is we don't know these guys. We don't know them. We don't go to their houses. We don't spend social time with them. And there is a contract that exists between the league, the fans, and, and the player. And I think when it happens, you find out, you begin to ask yourself, if you are a superstar athlete, you've got this money, you've got all of this wealth, what is going to provide your compass when money is no object and when people give you things and no one ever tells you no, 
what is going to provide that balance to keep you from making these choices? And I think that right now Ben Roethlisberger doesn't have the answer and he needs to find it pretty quickly. Howard, this is, of course, uh, the first player ever uh, under this new enhanced policy from Roger Goodell suspended without even facing criminal charges. I talked to several players who have played in the NFL, African-American players, in the past week, and all the other players suspended so far under this policy, the enhanced policy were African-American, and they were watching carefully, wondering what Roger Goodell was going to do. How prevalent do you think that, that acuity of uh, vision was this week? Well, I don't think there's any doubt that this is... All of this is a test case for, for Roger Goodell and for the player conduct policy. There's no doubt, and I'm not even talking about football. I was in a baseball clubhouse a few days ago, and African-American players in the baseball clubhouse were saying, where is the equity going to be? The, the, the racial element here is a very serious one simply because of the demographic of the sport and also because you just want to see fairness. On the other hand, you do have a player who was not convicted of a crime, but certainly if you read that 527-page report, he did not conduct himself the way that the league would like their players to conduct themselves. But from, from the standpoint of is there a double standard for white players against black players? Roger Goodell is certainly on the uh, in the bullseye in, in terms of how he meets out punishment. Ashley, your take? No, oh, I totally agree. And I think it's interesting because Roger Goodell, when he um, suspended Michael Vick and then reinstated him two to, after just two games, he saw that as a um, you know helping guide Vick back into the league. He was very careful um, about getting him the help that he needed and seeing a change in the person. And having spent you know, the last nine months with a front row seat to the Michael Vick reclamation tour, Vick has changed. He is a different person than he was before he went to prison. Now he had to go to prison and you know, lose everything, but he's different. And I think that Goodell at this point wants to you know, be that see that change in Roethlisberger and knows that he needs to have some change. So, John, on the list of 